Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, men fall in love when you reveal this. <laughs> All right, before we begin really quickly, if uh, you're new to my YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button so you can get uh, notified of new content. Also click the bell wherever it's at. All right, um, our topic, men fall in love when you reveal this. So. You know, it occurs to me that we oftentimes think of love from the perspective of all the good things we like in a person, all the good things we like in a person, all the qualities, those great qualities that we like, chivalry, trustworthiness, uh, ambitious, confidence, all those things, whether it's a man or woman, there's nothing more attractive than a person that's in their power, that loves themselves so much that they're in their confidence, when they're in their victor consciousness, and they're in their power. But the reality is, is everybody wants the perfect person. Everybody wants the princess charming or the prince charming, you know? And the one thing about prince charming in particular, or princess charming, is that they're perfect. They're perfect. And yet we know human beings are riddled with I don't even like to say the word flaws, but just little cracks in the armor. Human beings are riddled with insecurities, fears, uncertainties, doubts in life. And so, and that's what makes us human. That's what makes us unique are these little cracks in who we are, okay? It just happens to be a ref so, but the one challenge for most people is they're stuck in their cracks, okay? They are stuck in their woundedness. They're stuck in their fears. They're stuck in their insecurities. But I wanna lean past that because the reality is, is most people are good people. They're just bad at the dating process. If you've been following my work, I've been saying this for years, most men are good guys. They're just bad daters, okay? But I want to reveal to you what men ultimately fall in love with in relationship. I got to breathe into this one for a second because it's one of my favorite shares that I'm about to do for you today. But, it, and, and, I don't like saying but, and, by the way, be mindful when you use the word but because when you say but, you just negated everything you just said. So I want to take that back. And since I don't edit my videos, I'm going stream of consciousness. Let me go back to this. So, um, a friend of mine, Ariel Ford, wrote the book Wabi Sabi Love. And I don't have a copy of it to show you, but if you're not familiar with the book, go to Amazon, check it out. But uh, Wabi Sabi is the, I believe it's the Japanese art of seeing the perfection in the imperfection. In other words, it, it talks about a vase that has a crack in it. And what makes that vase so beautiful is the crack in the vase. And the reality is that we all have some cracks in us. So those, those aspects of our personality that aren't necessarily all that lovable, and yet that's ultimately what we fall in love with. And so I'm not sure if you're familiar with the movie When Harry Met Sally, When Harry Met Sally. And if you're not familiar with the movie, please go rent it. It's a classic movie. It's a great movie. I think it came out in 1985. So for a lot of you millennials and stuff, you're not familiar with, may not be familiar with it, but for us boomers and Gen Xers, we certainly know about it. So the one unique thing about Sally, the one unique thing about Sally was she was slightly neurotic and she was even listed as high maintenance in the movie. And one of the unique uh, characteristics she has was when she went and ordered food at a restaurant. She was incredibly high maintenance. She wanted the salad dressing on the side, but if it didn't have croutons in it, she needed it this way. And if the meatloaf didn't have gravy a certain way, then the gravy has to be this way, to be this way, and to be this way. And Harry, this is Sally talking about, Harry's looking like, oh my God, she's so high maintenance. She's so high maintenance. But what's so interesting and fascinating is at the end of the movie, his quote was, I love it that it takes you an hour and a half to order a ham sandwich. I love it that you think 70 degrees is cold. I love it that you're the first person I think of when I wake up in the morning. You're the last person I think of when I go to bed. And the reason why I rushed over here is to tell you all that. He didn't fall in love with the perfect aspects of her. He fell in love with those little cracks, those little neurosis parts of her. And I'm here to say we all have a wonderful, weird part to us. I think there's a, a Dr. Seuss quote that's called the wonderful weirdness. And we all have a weirdness to us. 
My weirdness is I hate condiments. I am grossed out by condiments. Anytime I see condiments, I'm literally freaked out about it. I can't have condiments on the table. It's just one of my weirdnesses. But it's in our weirdness, our uniqueness, or even our little neuroses, that's what makes us special. And we ultimately fall in love with that. I know I was in a relationship with a woman, and I remember when we first started dating, anytime we went to a restaurant, she'd say, let's Yelp it to check out the reviews. And what was so interesting is she'd read the five-star review and read the one-star review, and every time she'd read the one-star review, we couldn't go to that restaurant because she was hung up on the one-star review. She'd kill me for saying this. And many of you know my ex-relationship. But what was so fascinating was when our relationship ended, I found myself checking out Yelp reviews. I loved that part of her that was curious enough, and it drove me nuts at times. But that's what I fell in love with her. I fell in love with those little parts of her personality that weren't perfect to me, but, or excuse me, that I didn't, wouldn't do, but I found them perfect for me. And while we're not together, which is okay, because we had our differences, I recognize that we truly fall in love with those parts of our, you know, parts of people that's the weird part, those unique parts, those things you can't describe. That's the delicious part of a relationship because that's the thing we gravitate towards. Ultimately, we all want those great qualities in a person, but it's those unusual weird qualities that we ultimately fall in love with. So explore your weirdness. That's my invitation for you to explore your weirdness. I just shared with you my weirdness, the condiments, right? And I've got plenty of other weird things. Um, explore your weirdness. In fact, post a comment below that, that shares your weirdness. If you have something weird about you that you think is kind of attractive, I want to hear about it. In fact, anybody who does post a comment, you're eligible for a free gift I'm going to send out. For one lucky person, you're going to get a free gift if you post a comment about your weirdness or a comment about what you thought about this video. I'd like to hear your thoughts. If this resonated with you, if I missed something, tell me about it. I want to hear about it. Ah, also, if you, I've thought about hiring a coach, but you're not ready, check out my group below called Midlife Love Mastery. It's a great program where you get access to me 24 seven, it seems like, not 24 seven, but you get access to me for an inexpensive cost. Just check out the link. It's called Midlife Love Mastery. All right, I'm gonna sign off this video as I always do, giving you a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug if I have your consent. Aw, oh, thank you. Mm. Wishing you a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye now.